So there's this YouTube channel, Nelk, and for the past two years, they've been one of the fastest growing channels on this entire website. I mean, don't get me wrong, they've been popular for a while, but it's only been around two years since they went completely YouTube rock star, weird paparazzi guy follows me popular. Don't usually see you guys out in Beverly no, Hills, man. I what are you up to today? I know we're on the level. I started watching them the spring semester of my freshman year of college back in 2016, and these guys were hilarious, they were original, and you could just see it in the content how excited the main two guys Jesse and Kyle were to finally be living out and executing their YouTube dreams. There was also third member Lucas who served as the more level-headed person in the group, the voice of reason who made sure they wouldn't take things too far. Hey, is that some foreshadowing I hear? Originally based in Canada, they would do prank calls, pretend to work at popular stores, and in general made feel-good videos that made people laugh but never felt like anything too extreme. Oh, the dad shirt? Yeah. Just got it at the, um, the store in here. Oh, okay. Oh, the Happy campus store. Oh, do you have a daughter here? Yes. Oh, okay. You, maybe you can introduce me or something. <laughs> yeah, if you want. I'm Kyle. Hey, I'm Kyle. a certified beauty. I would take good care of her, just letting you know. Something people of all ages could enjoy. This was also after what I would call the death of the prank community with massive prank YouTubers like Fousey and Vitaly being outed for essentially tricking their own audiences with fake pranks and fake social experiments. God, those two guys are just terrible people. Amongst a large community of prankster scumbags, by the way. So obviously with this being said, no kind of seemed like the diamond in the rough. The chosen one who would carry an entire genre on YouTube from 2016 to current day, which is super impressive. These guys have great business minds. But it wasn't always that way. Back in 2016, their videos still felt very raw. Gordon Ramsay would have hated this. Just two guys riding around Canada with a camera making stuff happen. We did not get sued. We just got banned for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was wondering if you maybe wanted some black tar heroin. No. You don't want any? Uh, thank you. Attention shoppers in aisle 12 and 13. I let one. I let a stinky fart go, 12 and 13 shoppers, so be, be sure to plug your nose guys and uh, happy shopping. Make sure you plug your nose, the fart stinks really bad. These videos were classics and they were building a cult fan base who couldn't wait to see their next move. I remember I was always looking forward to some Nelk, but when this channel started taking off and the Nelk boys were getting real fame and some money in their pockets, these two wanted to take it to the next level while Lucas wanted out completely, in the end becoming a plumber. Yeah, so basically, Lucas, I don't know if you guys are wondering or not, but Lucas is not gonna be coming back to the channel, guys. He's not gonna be doing videos with, like he's not gonna be doing videos with us anymore. This was a huge turning point for the boys as they would start routinely making trips into America on a mission to create more content with other influencers, all while trying to get their name out there and develop a prank TV show. Because for years, this has been a serious aspiration for both Jesse and Kyle. They hired 905 Shooter during this time to replace Lucas as their full-time cameraman, the man who is now famously kicked out of the group for sending D pics to Nelk groupies. I specifically remember two videos that changed their channel forever. Coke prank on Mexican cops and the crazy lady steal our camera video. The coke video made them famous overnight as many mainstream outlets pick the story up and the crazy lady steal our camera video. Then ended up turning into the first ever merch drop on the Nelk channel with the George Hennen line. Honestly, I remember that G Henny shit was hilarious. I know at this moment because this was the first time Nelk ever asked their audience for monetary support. They were just getting railed by YouTube's monetization and had to keep the party going, so they sold some cool merch. From here, they saw the potential of releasing these limited merch runs. Exclusivity made the brand hot, and suddenly they were doing these drops all the time under their Full Send branding. This Full Send brand has a cult following of its own, and their drops sell out in minutes as it's insanely popular with suburban males and frat boys everywhere. I mean, this thing was about to get bigger than anyone could ever imagine. Pause. Basically, I think a lot of people thought the Nelk Boys were going to be the next jackass type entity in the entertainment space, because let's face it, YouTube and social media and video clips are society's current day entertainment. But this is also when YouTube decided to no longer monetize Nelk's channel, giving them two community guideline strikes by mid-2018, leaving them unable to make money or even upload to YouTube for months. This is when they launched FullSend.com, a subscription-based website where you could see their new pranks and behind-the-scenes footage for $3 a month. For this $3, you could see all the content you needed from Nelk, which seemed like a pretty good trade-off considering they 
were selling the idea that they were done with YouTube forever. Though they would abandon the site and subscription model not too long after the strikes on their YouTube channel went away. It was now the beginning of 2018 and they were free to continue skyrocketing up the YouTube scene. Spending most of their time in California at this point, they decided to introduce more mainstream influencers than before like Vitaly, Adam22, Bradley Martin, and Cody Ko. The channel was changing and only getting better in the eyes of the audience. The pranks were getting bigger and bolder every single time. But fundamentally, there was a problem with this newfound fame as well. Because it's kind of hard to do pranks on college campuses when that's your main demographic audience and someone is bound to recognize you. Stores and shopping malls also started catching on quickly, making it hard for the original crew to do pranks. This is also around the same time period where they introduced now major figure on the channel, Steve will do it when they made their drinking and lectures video, advertising him as the crazy guy who doesn't give a shit and will, hence his name, do anything. I don't think when they first had this guy on, they had any idea how big he would be. And we want to introduce you to one of our boys, Steve will do it. What's up? What's good, baby? What's up, man? What's up, What's up? the vlog people? Got some Ronas. He himself, in many ways, has eclipsed the original members of Nelk, especially Jesse. At first, he was more reserved, but now it's like the complete Steve takeover. And don't get me wrong, this guy has some serious talent for entertainment. But was this the best decision for Nelk? I guess you could say so because this is when Nelk really caught fire all last year. They were traveling to different countries, doing crazy shit, and people love their new style of 60% pranks, 40% raw vlogs. They started getting millions of views on the very first day of their videos dropping, their merch drops were going crazy, and they were seeing a lot of rapid success growing their full send team and brand daily. And as Steve became a bigger and bigger part of the channel, the once third man 905 shooter was faded out in favor of the much more marketable Steve. Put simply, 905 got eaten alive by this man. They found the perfect chance to kick him out of the group when his little d pick scandal came out and they axed him. The Nelk boys were skyrocketing with their newfound formula. College douchebags and high school kids everywhere were loving this ignorant shit. They continued on making the show a booze fest where all they did was fuck with people and party and get fucked up. It's not acceptable behavior. Let's go! Like the once innocent little pranksters quickly turned into different people in just a few years. Before it seems like they were inspired by impractical jokers and jackass, now it seems like they're inspired by college frat tools. Even with that being said, I would still catch a video from time to time and it's entertaining enough. Like I can see why certain people like it is what I'm trying to say. Throughout their 7 years on the platform, Nelk has never received anything but praise and support from their viewers. Almost like a train that never stops, they just keep picking up more and more momentum. But I do have to say, lately the tide has really shifted. When people watch a channel for a long time, they kind of know what to expect every time they tune in. But during this time of pandemic, Nelk has found it difficult to make content. It's hard to travel, they're extremely well known, and I'm sure there's a lot of legal liability issues right now. I mean, even Mr. Beast ain't doing shit. So there hasn't been a lot of videos, and when there is videos, you can bet your ass that at least a quarter of the video is them advertising for their merch. And now in their lowest move yet, they've decided to basically basically relaunch their old full send idea, but this time call it Send Club, and charge kids $20 a month to be part of it. Dude, that's like having Netflix, Apple Music, and some OnlyFans content for a month. Fuck your pranks. All they really did was dress up the old idea, adding perks that are more of a fan's pipe dream than anything. Come party with us, and watch our Zoom calls for $20 a month. And the way they went about announcing this Send Club was even scummier, when they clickbaited their entire audience all week, acting like they they were bringing 905 Shooter back when they didn't. Slandering his name in the video by the way, and then using him to drive even more viewers, more fans, to their latest scam. Saying that you could only see this exclusive interview where they talked to 90 on their website paying that $20. And believe me, a lot of people will go out of their way to pay to see that shit. I caught a YouTube live stream rip of it before they took it down, and it was a garbage, awkward interview anyways. Not to mention the video they posted on Blue Cock. It was by far their most hated video. Between the clickbait and the terribly unfunny monologues, people did not like this. And we get that Steve thinks it's funny to act gay, but these jokes are just immature, low-hanging fruit at this point. Where is that sweet? Sweet cock, I miss that ass. Can we see their cocks? Hard decision, but I think it comes down to this. Gonna need to see your cocks right now. What the f 
He's like the one dude on the football team who's always acting gay with everyone. He's acting so gay you start to have your suspicions. How are these the same guys who used to stay at fans' houses and only wanted to charge $3 a month when they were screwed on money? These guys just really need to remember where they started. They used to have some of the best videos on the site, and these videos were meant to reach a large audience, not just a bunch of college fucks. And I think that Nelk's gonna be fine, guys. I'm sure next week they'll bounce back with a good video that's well received by their fans. It's just interesting to see how much these guys have changed since the beginning and the decisions they've made about who to keep around and how to start acting. But hey, sometimes you gotta go where the money takes you, man. You gotta go where the money takes you. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. The support has been great lately. I really appreciate the likes and shares. They help me out more than you can imagine. As y'all know, it's been your boy, the Tan Superman. There's some other YouTube news out here that needs to get covered. So it's been your boy, and I'm out. Peace.